You know you're doing well when your character is branded on all sorts of crazy stuff as cross-promotion to try and market any product out there. Usually with dubious legality. But have no fear, for you see, this is an official Nintendo licensed product. Now granted, this is not the actual Nintendo seal of approval and quality, so its overall quality is probably a little dubious at best. Also, it's trademarked and copyrighted in 2015. Really hoping what's inside isn't, or else this, this could be bad, but it probably has enough preservatives to outlast the Great Pyramids. This is the Surprise Cube Fruitalicious Chewy Candy Super Mario. And, uh... It sure is. Uh, before we actually try and figure out what this thing is, let's just talk about the packaging. It is a candy type of thing, obviously, but it is marketed in this nice little plastic case. Now, the problem with plastic cases is they usually overprice the packaging a lot. So when you end up spending like $3 on this, pretty much all of that's going to the packaging and not the contents. Another thing I do appreciate is while they did create the packaging around being a toy that you could play with, thus sort of justifying the content and costs. It's not terribly well designed. It's a little building brick, as you can see, and it is a 2x2 building brick. Now, if you've ever built Legos using only 2x2 bricks, you probably understand that that takes twice as long to build anything. It's also worth noting that because this is a small object that would be supporting similarly small objects, i.e. more of these 2x2 two two bricks, it doesn't exactly lend itself to structural integrity because it's not a strong wide base. It's also worth noting that this is a hollow 2x2 two two brick, which in turn means that it's probably also not very structurally sound, and that's called architecture, for what that's worth. Another thing worth noting is, you know, if you took off the Super Mario logo, if you took off the Nintendo logo back here, you know, this this is just the plastic cube that contains something. I, I would have probably marketed this slightly differently in a way that would at least tell you that this is definitely a Mario branded thing. I'm not sure if there's other surprise cubes out there, but, you know, if you're gonna go out of your way to make a Mario branded one, I would, you know, turn all this blue plastic into, say, yellow, and then maybe paint like a little question mark on the side, make it look officially Mario. Now one thing I do like is this does have a little pull tab that you can yank off, at least in theory, to open this thing. Unfortunately, the back side does not, so you're expected to still claw at this thing. Or if you're like me, have a knife on hand. So let's just chop this up, drop my knife, and crack this open and see what we get in this surprise cube. Oh well, there's some stuff in here. Okay, it looks like we got stickers. More stickers. Even more stickers than just that. You could almost run an entire Mario Part Mario Party Mario Kart course with these stickers. Uh, we got some sort of pop-up thing over here. Some kind of pop-up uh, piranha plant. That's actually kind of neat. Let's see, we've got some sort of cardboard. I think this is like a stand-up Koopa shell as well as a guide to collecting all of these. Because apparently there are more of these whatever they are. And apparently they can construct other things. Oh, okay, so that you can actually sort of like half crack these open and make them even smaller and less structurally sound. Uh, that's not that great, but okay. Again, there's yellow ones, so I don't know why these aren't, you know, especially Mario branded question mark blocks, especially since they're being cross promoted. And inside we have a single flavor of candy. I'm really hoping this is lemon and not pineapple because pineapple is the worst. But uh, let's let's pop this open and see what what we've got here. It's look like like mini lemon heads or something. Let's, uh, That is a weird flavor. You'd think they taste like lemon, these, these little candy things that I'm clearly pointing to off screen. They don't really though. 
they're, they're weird. They taste kind of almost like those little, like, chewy marshmallow strawberries you get. They're also really weird because they're not entirely chewy. They're... They've got, like, a crunchy outer shell and, like, a chewy inner shell. It's weird. But well, we got some stickers as well as whatever this is. Let's let's pop these bad boys open and see what exactly this little Koopa shell dealy is. Oh, you pop it out. Look like you can pop these little arrows out as well. And what these do is a very good question. I'm not entirely sure. There's a little cross on this guy and little slots on here. So you could probably do something like this and fold these two together. Like so. And then you could probably pop out this little cross in the middle of this guy, which I'm clearly doing on screen. Let's see if we can just push that through. Let's completely disassemble that like we know what we're doing. And I guess you got some sort of like pop-up Koopa shell stand thing? I guess. Let's let's see what this piranha plant dealy is. So we might as well explore the breadth and majesty of the surprise cube. So it's all basically cardboard, although it's kinda almost sort of foam feeling. That shot off the table entirely. A little pipe there. Got another pipe. I don't know what this is, but it pops out. And then we got a little piranha plant. Now, I, I kind of have a vague idea of what this could be. I think. As we crack that open. Pop that guy out. That piranha plant really does not want to go. Okay, so this is sort of what was in there. So we got two pipes, this thing, and a piranha plant. Now what I'm thinking is that the piranha plant fits in the middle of this. This little disc-based thing. I get my knife and just pop that crap out. Pop that middle one out and take care not to stab myself. Get that out there. That one almost wants to go. This stuff is weird. It's not quite in like foam and it's not quite cardboard either. It's got like a weird consistency to it. Pop that one out. And then we've got that. And then we've got these little guys right here our little pipes, presumably that this thing has to pop out of. There's that one popped out. Let's see about this. There's another one. So we've got these three parts. And if I understand what this is, I think, and I should probably actually be looking at my viewfinder to see what I'm doing. I think we Plug that into the center, I think. Pop these down the sides, kind of, sort of, maybe? Oh, I know what we gotta do, okay. So we gotta put the pipes over here. Kind of like, a, basically a, a mini pipe table. And then this thing, I think, goes in the center of this to help stabilize a little bit. As I can fiddle. Let's get that in there. And then this guy goes back in here. Because, again, it's supposed to be like a table kind of thing. Actually, probably would have been easier to do it this way. And then we get these two in like so, just a little footstool type thing, and then in the middle, we just gotta plunk our best friend, Mr. Piranha Plant, in there, hopefully without wrecking the foam, actually, let's 
do that in reverse. Let's put the piranha plant in first. Because that actually makes a lot of sense. Okay, so this is a problem. The foam isn't particularly well made. And as you can see on the piranha plant down here, at its base it's already bent. So, I'm going to try and make a little bit more room for them. That can be the most well-made thing, but we will try it and see if that helps. Now let's plug in our Piranha Pal, or chop them in half and just glue them on top, because clearly the hole is not really made for that size. Alright, there. That kind of works. And then we just put these underneath. Now I'm really worried about doing that, honestly, because that's that's the problem with this. This foam is really delicate. And opposed to like, say, Kinder eggs, which are still kind of similarly not well built, at least, you know, they're made of plastic, so they at least kind of have a little bit more toughness and durability to them. They, they can get kind of squeezed around a little bit to get in there. But we will get this guy in here, hopefully. Or snap him entirely, but the short version is he would stand in there like that. I'm gonna have to uh, paint this and uh, probably glue him in there and probably snap him up a little bit better so he fits, but that's kind of what you get. So. Basically, in this surprise cube, Super Mario whatevers, you get a couple of stickers, some bizarre candy, and some interesting collectible foam-ish props. I still don't know what this is supposed to be for. It's not like a toy or anything, really. They're just kind of stands that aren't the most well-made. But, um, you know, for $3, it's not great, but it's not horrible either. I've had certainly significantly better candy, and I've had significantly better figures, but you know, you get some stickers, you get candy. I don't know why you get one flavor, though. That seems lazy to me. And it's not the best, but you know, it's an interesting little pool of knickknacks you can get for the price of like $2, $3. And like I said, most of that price is just going to the plastic container over there. Overall, would I recommend the Super Mario Prize Cube? Well, it's interesting, and if you can find it for cheap, I guess maybe. It's not horrible, but I've, I've had significantly better candies and collectibles. But it was a neat thing to take a look at, if nothing else. Although I am still quite curious about the legitimacy of that Nintendo seal that I'm pointing to off the viewfinder on the back.